Hi everyone, Phil from Tech for Text. Today we're going to be looking at this Acasa M.2 solid state drive to PCI Express adapter kit which comes with a heatsink. Here's a quick message from our sponsor. Okay guys, today we are looking at this Acasa M.2 SSD to PCI Express adapter card with a heatsink cooler which in basic means you can get an M.2 card or SSD like this one here uh, and you can put it into this um, basically adapter which will then slot into your motherboard which will allow you to uh, um, get it to run faster and cooler uh, potentially and um, obviously our testing will check to see what sort of temperatures and speeds it runs at in comparison to plugging it directly into the board. We'll also see if a machine that doesn't have uh, an M.2 socket in like for example uh, an older motherboard uh, and you put that in see if it actually picks it up or not. So uh, uh, let's take a look. So first of all uh, here's your box as you can see there M.2 to PCI Express so forth um, so it's uh, M.2 PCI Express 3.0 times 4 NVMe to PCI Express 4 times host adapter um, so it pretty much says it all on the front there uh, on the back does show you a bit of information on there as well as in exactly how it fits um, as well as how it uh, gets rid of all the heat and everything on there as well so let's open it up and have a look. There we go, still pack it, so there we go. So what do we have? Right, okay, so inside the box we have a uh, a bracket for a low profile case, so if you've got small PCI Express slots because it's a slim case you'd attach that to it. Instead you've got your manual which looks like a plain black and white A4 piece of paper there for you so just basically tells you how to fit it uh, in basic so uh, not most people will probably need to read that but it is there so let's just put that to one side and then inside here you've actually got the board itself so as you can see you've got your PC Express uh, socket there your M.2 socket there which will go across there and obviously screw on to get the right way around there like that uh, and then you'll have a heat sink which I'm guessing is in this little bag here and when it comes out Oops, nice little wrap, that's for sure. Here we go. Rip it open. And there you've got your heat sink, which has, looks like it's pre applied yet, yeah, so it'll just stick straight on to the actual uh, SSD. So, in basics, that'll go in there, and that'll go on top. Um, you do have some more pads inside. Um, I'm guessing you put one pad underneath here for cushioning and so forth, but we'll have a look, closer look at that in a few minutes. Installation was very easy, all you needed to do was put the backing thermal pad onto the M.2 SSD then screw the M.2 SSD into the adapter uh, with the small screw which is provided uh, apply the thermal pads to the back of the heatsink and then stick it to the top of the SSD uh, it doesn't screw into the SSD or anything like that, it just basically the thermal pads hold it in place and then plug the uh, adapter directly into a PCI Express slot. We tested this adapter in machines up to around about five years old and each machine it was able to pick it up as a boot device as well as picked up in Windows automatically um, if you were putting it as a second drive. Um, you didn't need any extra um, software, uh, drivers, anything like that for it to work. It was basically plug and play so as long as you've got that um, socket on the board it should work. Obviously booting depends on if the motherboard supports it and obviously your SSD uh, but in theory uh, most should. 
the adapter is backwards compatible all the way down to Gen 1 PCI Express. So Gen 1, Gen 2 and current Gen 3 um, standard. Um, so you shouldn't have any issues with it uh, being picked up by your motherboard. So obviously make sure you have got a free slot. It's not been overlapped by, uh, let's say, a large graphics card or something like that. But as, as long as you've got free slot there, uh, it should plug in and work um, absolutely fine. Okay, next on to testing. We basically did um, four tests um, for speed. Uh, read and write through Atto and then read and write using Crystal Disk Mark. Uh, we also did a temperature test as well. We tested ha um, the SSD directly into the uh, M.2 socket on the motherboard. We also tried it with the M.2 socket on the motherboard with the heatsink supplied as well, as well as in the adapter without the heatsink and with the heatsink so basically you've got a combination uh, of C which helps better the adapter the heatsink or both together whichever way we did it as soon as you attach the heatsink to the uh, SSD the temperatures dropped by 10 to 12 degrees within testing obviously when it was uh, idle uh, the temperatures were not f far off the same probably within two or three degrees now the speed test, which is what most people on here are probably wanting to see, we actually found that um, the write speeds were roughly around the same, whether it was on the motherboard, the adapter, with the heatsink or without. Um, so there wasn't a huge difference, and uh, where there was, it was around about 1%, which was uh, here, neither or there. But what we did find was the actual read speeds were faster and in actual um, some of the tests we found for example crystal disk mark we found that the ssd with it on the adapter with the heatsink was running at 3097.6 megabytes that's nearly 100 megabytes per second faster than the ssd claims it goes and was roughly 9% faster than when it was plugged in to the motherboard on the M.2 socket where we got a score of 2815.9. The biggest surprise results was when using Atto and actually checking the read speed. On the motherboard we'd only get around about 2350 megabytes per second uh, but when it was actually um, connected into the um, adapter we were actually getting an increase of 550 megabytes and it was reading at roughly 2,900 megabytes per second. That's a 19% speed increase. We also found that the tests were more consistent because we run each test multiple times to make sure there was no issues or anything like that. Um, and each test um, it came out more consistently when it was in the adapter using the heatsink. In reality though, would you actually see a difference in speed? Potentially yes, depending on what you're doing. But again, it's one of those things, you're not going from something what's really slow to something what's really fast. You're going some, from something what's really fast to something what's really, really fast. So would you actually notice that actual speed increase? Um, possibly, possibly not. Um, but you may notice it a bit smoother and you should get a lot less lag spikes, um, especially uh, when it starts getting hot and it's doing lots of different things. You can actually buy the adapter and the actual heatsink separately if you wish, but to be honest, they work well together. So I'd suggest you buy them as a bundle, or if you can't get them as a bundle, uh, as getting the actual adapter and the heatsink separately and putting them together, because then you get the best of both worlds. You get extra speed and you also get a cooler device. And as we all know, the cooler you keep electronics, potentially the longer it's going to last. The recommended retail price around this is a hard one. Um, I would say it's around about the £30 mark. So for roughly £30 you could increase the speed of your SSD by up to around about 19%. But again, this may vary on motherboard, SSD and so forth. So the conclusion. The Acasa M.2 adapter is a nice piece of tech. Acasa have brought together two good products to make one amazing product, and that's the heatsink and the adapter itself. It was able to speed up our M.2 SSD and keep it running a lot cooler at the same time, 
While it may not um, be needed by everyone, it is a must for anyone who wants to squeeze every ounce of performance out of their computer they can. It is an amazing product at an amazingly good price. And this is as close as you'll probably get to overclocking your SSD without actually overclocking it. So the standout point was obviously the speed and the cooling. The pros was high read speeds, low temperatures, more consistent speed, uh, possible increase in lifespan of the SSD due to the temperature. It's got a nice black finish and will fit into most designs unless unfortunately you've got a white case. Um, so that's pretty good. The uh, negatives, um, there wasn't very much of a change in the write speeds unfortunately, uh, but they didn't get worse, let's put it that way. Uh, and um, the other negative is obviously it's only in black, so uh, if you're got a white case or something like that it may clash as someone who likes to overclock the machine and get every bit of performance out of it I possibly can because to me time is money and also I I do enjoy making things go faster um, this is a must and I've actually um, ordered some of these and put them on one uh, side uh, for when I actually rebuild my machine in the next couple of months and will be installing all my SSDs um, what I've got on M.2s uh, on these devices because uh, an extra up to 19% speed difference hey I'm not going to complain at that especially when the retail price is only around about 30 pounds because of that, we've decided to give this the Hell Yeah Award because of its amazing speed, performance and cooling ability all in one product. If you like this review, you can read more at tech4techs.co.uk or click the link in the description. Uh, again, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe, like and share. Thanks again and see you next time.